Fedor, the last emperor, Emelianenko. He's a 230-pound heavyweight, and he's won nearly half his fights by choking his opponents out. All people need to breathe. The trick is to intelligently cut the oxygen, to put them in a position where he can't do anything, and to wait until he literally goes to sleep. Fedor, you're known as the greatest chokeout master in MMA history. So what we want to do is to measure the amount of force that you could apply if you didn't have to worry about injuring an actual opponent. How do we have this dummy censored up? Well, basically, we have a force sensor inside the neck here so that we'll be able to tell exactly how you put your chokehold around your opponent, where you apply that force, and how much force you apply. To give us more insight about the chokeout, we brought in legendary MMA referee Big John McCarthy. What the person is doing is they're actually taking their arm, bringing it all the way across. They're going to be taking their hand, placing their hand to their bicep. The other hand is going to come up behind the person's head, forcing that neck to move forward into the arm, which is going to put pressure on the carotid arteries, which is going to cause the person to pass out. But what chokes harder, a man or nature's most dangerously powerful snake? Fedor's ready to help us find out. Cindy, you ready? Ready. Fedor, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. After 10 seconds, the dead is in, and the results are staggering. Wow. So when we're looking at Fedor's results from the chokehold on the dummy, in all total, he was at about 500 pounds of force. He kind of ramped up to that, and then he held it steady for the whole 10 seconds, which was really pretty amazing. 500 pounds of force. That's like being squeezed by an Alaskan brown bear for 10 seconds. In an MMA match, the ref stops the bout the instant a fighter taps out or goes unconscious. But were Fedor to continue choking with that 500 pounds of force on a real person, it could be deadly. Here's an inside look at Fedor's ultimate chokeout. As the arms cinch up, the choke closes the carotid artery, blocking blood flow to the brain. It takes only 150 pounds of pressure to crush the trachea. So Fedor's 500 pounds would be more than enough to devastate the windpipe. And in the worst case scenario, if Fedor were to torque the rear of the neck, the strain could sever the spinal cord. So how does Fedor's choking power compare to a snake? To find out, we brought in one of the best choking snakes on the planet, the Burmese python. Pythons have been known to eat everything, from rodents and birds to livestock and even people. Once the constrictor actually gets a hold of you, whips a few coils around your windpipe and around your chest, Every time you exhale, heel tight and hold it at that position. You will never take another breath as big as you just had. Five to ten seconds, timber, boom, down you go. That's it. To get this python to attack, and since it was feeding time anyway, the snake wrangler has provided a dead rat. OK, 
Okay. Okay, put pressure on. Yeah, yep, it's fine. You getting pressure? Yeah. Oh my okay. God, look at that. Okay. Wow. Look at how it's just tightened up. And you notice he's around both the throat and the carotid artery, so he's, he's going to go out. Okay. It's done. It's, I, can't, I can't collect anymore anyway. Wow. That was it. The data from our sensors is in. Now, when we're starting to look at what the snake actually did, he was right at about 40 pounds of force. Only 40 pounds of force. That's 460 pounds less than Fedor generated. Believe it or not, Fedor chokes an incredible 12 times harder than the lethal reptile. So Fedor has a stranglehold on this competition. But here's something you should know about the python. This predator can maintain its maximum power for over three hours, or as long as it takes to kill its victim. We now know the damage caused by Fedor's maximum choking power. But there's still one piece of data missing. How little force does it take to choke a person out? To test that, we had to find a different kind of dummy altogether. The things I do for science. Oh, you oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. When we come back, our host gets his neck wrung by this Russian anaconda. Oh, my God. Three, two, one. began this test with a simple question. When it comes to choking power, what squeezes harder, man or snake? Oh, oh, oh. The nine-foot python we brought in squeezed with 40 pounds of force. Wow. Look yeah, at it's just tightening up. You notice he's around both the throat and the carotid artery. But that's nothing compared to mixed martial arts legend Fedor Emelianenko clamped down with 500 pounds of force. So we know what squeezes harder, but what we don't know is how little force it takes to choke a person out. To answer that, we're using a different kind of dummy altogether. I'm about to get choked out by the baddest man on the planet. That's right. Earlier in the show, sports science host John Brinkus sacrificed his entire body going up against NFL All-Pro defender Chris Jenkins. Now John's neck is literally on the line. John's in trouble. John's going to go to sleep. I mean, you know, it's not a bad thing. I've been choked out many times. I only have a couple twitches from it now. It's not that bad. The things I do for science. We've rigged John up with sensors to show us what's going on inside his body as he's being choked out. So this is a pulse oximeter. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture your heart rate, which will probably be high, and the oxygen saturation in your blood, which may go down, depending. So we'll see how the results are, but your heart rate will probably go up because you're stressed, and your oxygen will probably go down. Do I look stressed? A little bit. You'll be okay. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I'm just extraordinarily freaked out right now. Our dummy John's all rigged up and ready to go. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Are you ready? You're up to 136. <laughs> oh, my God. A heart rate of 136 is almost twice as fast as the average resting heart rate. And we're just getting started. Go eat something. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you sure you're not going to crush my windpipe? <laughs> All right. Please do not hurt me. Right. We have 141. Okay, John, are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Okay, Pedro, are you ready? Oh my God. Three, God. Oh. two, one. 
John's heart rate spikes to 180. He's redlining, experiencing a severe panic attack, and the oxygen going to his brain has decreased by 15%. But that small decrease is enough to put our host out. 